but it looks longer than it really is. It's it looks longer than it really is. Rosalind 
You know, we, we have a lot of statues around St. Louis. Some of generals commemorating great historical figures like presidents, explorers, and even artists. Uh, but sometimes it's nice to honor a good man while he is still here to see him. Your life of service is a shining example of bravery, dedication, sacrifice, and a real commitment to doing what was right, even when it was hard. And that's the stuff that heroes are made of. And you are definitely one of mine. And I am proud to call you my good friend. Congratulations on this wonderful honor. Thank you, and may God bless you. Let me say good afternoon to all of you in the street. We have to mention my good friend George. This is simply outstanding. You deserve everything that you did. You earned it. Let me say this also. I knew you missed it, but they mentioned this. What's his wife? Stand up, sweetheart. Where is she? Stand up, sweetheart. I'm going to look at you. It's all about you, too. You got something. Okay? People say that. I have to go to a lot of places. The places I go, I recognize him in the right place because he's there as well. And his love is right there and also. But George, we can look over. Right. All right. Really good. Come on, rep representation. Sherman does an outstanding job. He is a great mentor. Being where you're supposed to be, you're supposed to be there. And sometimes we don't do that. You know what I'm talking about. He was there, and he represented and did an outstanding job. I'm going to say this, it's not in order, but on behalf of St. Louis County, man, hell, we're proud of you, man. You're good people. Give it up. Thank you. 
to you today to say congratulations to Chief George on behalf of the St. Louis Police Department, but also, but also on behalf of the Ice family. Uh, Chief George and my father started on the fire department around the same time. My uh, family have been friends of George for, for many years, so I want to say thank you for your service to the city of St. Louis. Certainly you've been a trailblazer in fire service. Um, more important than that, you've been a great family man, uh, you've been a great person, and we thank you for that. We thank you for standing up for what is right, and I also thank you for being a mentor to me. Thank you very much, and this is a, a fitting tribute to you and your reviewed the order again, because I'll be honest, I, I would have came up here earlier and you would have kicked me out of line. <laughs> but uh, I am indeed honored to be here and, and also humble. Uh, you know, when I think about what this day means uh, and really making sure that we preserve this point in history and what this man has done for the city of St. Louis at great risk to him and his family, I cannot uh, be humbled more than I am right now, because I think that he has, mm -hmm. he has served the city of St. Louis in an extraordinary fashion. Uh, I have with me today a resolution from the Board of Aldermen, and judging by the rest of the agenda today, I'm not going to read it and burn up all your time. <laughs> but I will talk just real briefly about a point in this thing. Uh, this resolution, although it's but a piece of paper, what it does is an official act of the Board of Aldermen will be passed on the floor of the board. And when we pass it on the floor of the board, we, we submit in time some of the Chief's many contributions on behalf of residents of the city of St. Louis. So 100, 200 years from now, you can go research the records of the city of St. Louis and find his name amongst those records with a chronicle of some of his many accomplishments and that's what's important here today, to make sure that those accomplishments are put down into a solid record and, and done correctly. So, just real briefly, I'm not going to read it like I said, but I will quote the last paragraph where it says, Now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Aldermen that we pause in our deliberations to, to congratulate and thank Chief Sherman George for a job well done on behalf of the many families of the city of St. Louis we further direct the clerk to spread a copy of this resolution across the minutes of these proceedings and to the end, prepare a commemorative copy to give to the honoree at the time and place to the appropriate fire sponsor. And today at that time and place, Chief, thanks for a job well done. And on behalf of the Board of Alderman and the City of St. Louis, my family and friends and everybody I've ever met, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> good things people do. And you talking about discipline. Alderman Lewis Reed lost 60 pounds. Isn't that wonderful? 60 pounds. He walked faster, he smiled longer, and uh, you name it. Everything, as uh, Charlie Dooley says, is all good. It's all good. So congratulations. Charlie Dooley. Now we're, now we're going to call up uh, uh, first of all, we'd like for everybody in here who is a fireman, just period, all of you who have served or are still serving as firemen, just stay. Just see how many firemen. I'm going to tell you that I was at another event 
not too terribly long ago when the chief was the fire chief, and we were serving catfish in a hotel in the airport Marriott, and the smoke alarm went off <laughs> because uh, they had to fry the fish so fast. Because as soon as we bring out more fish, they could get it. So the chef was back there frying. Chief George was one of the guests, he and Catherine, and everybody looked over at him. <laughs> Chief George had already checked it out, kept eating his fish. When he kept eating his fish, everybody knew he was safe. <laughs> that was at an Urban League deal brunch many years ago. All right, now uh, all of you who went to high school with Chief George stand. If you went to high school with him, stand, because we'll also know how old we are. <laughs> all right, here's the thing. Here we are. Here we are. And all of you who grew up in one of the neighborhoods that we lived in, it was a whole lot of yards, and they all looked at the light. <laughs> so if you grew up with the charges, please stay. All the neighborhood people, neighborhood people.
And I'm calling up Maddie Moore. Maddie Moore is the Deputy Director for the Office of the Honorable Claire McCaskill. Following her will be, I haven't seen Dr. Suggs yet. Are you here, Dr. Suggs, yet? I know that he was coming in from out of town, all right? Percy Green, Jr., Executive Board of the Firefighters Institute for Racial Equality. We call that fire. And Reddit Hudson, Little Red. <laughs> Program Associate, ACLU of Eastern Missouri. And also a fine candidate. This is not a political rally, but he's a candidate, all right? All right, and he'll be followed by Joseph Muhammad, President of the International Association of Black Professional Firefighters. Good evening. I want to thank you for inviting Senator McCaskill to this wonderful event, Sherman George Torch Bearer for Justice. She regrets that she could not join you today. However, as her deputy director, I am so delighted to be here for my friend and his wife, Mrs. Sherman George, on behalf of Senator McCaskill. And I will bring you remarks from the senator. Dear Chief George, it is my distinct pleasure to honor and recognize your inspirational life and record of achievement. Your lifelong commitment and dedication to the safety and welfare of the city of St. Louis is admirable. As the first African American appointed chief to the St. Louis Fire Department, you serve as an example for justice and equality. Throughout your career, you have worked to promote the safety and well-being of all St. Louis's through community outreach programs, fire prevention programs, employee safety programs, and obtaining the funding and equipment necessary to secure the department's future. Your accomplishments demonstrate a dedication to public service and serve as an inspiration to your family, the St. Louis community, and our great state. Please accept my sincerest gratitude for your service. I wish you all the best in the years to come. Senator Claire McGaskill. Good afternoon. I just told Ms. Ida I'm Percy Green the third. Uh, currently I'm the Vice Chairman of Fire, Firefighters Institute for Racial Equality, and member of the St. Louis Fire Department. I am honored to be asked to speak on such a special occasion. Today is the induction to the Greg Grill Museum of Black History related to the Sherman George joined the St. Louis Fire Department some 40 years ago. During that time, he was able to rise to the ranks and ultimately become the first black fire chief in department history. Miraculous feat, to say the least. During his tenure as fire chief, Chief George battled contrived obstacles one after another for approximately eight years, trying to lead the fire department in the direction that was set that would set his uh, cut above the rest. I'm sure you all remember the controversy over the promotional test that Chief George refused to promote from. The facts are simple. Chief George, as the appointed authority, had the discretionary right to promote or not promote the firefighters whose testing was flawed. Chief George was merely doing what was fair and safe for all involved, including citizens, members of the department, and the community as a whole. Chief George always talked about leadership, 
which is indeed a prerequisite in the fire service, especially if you're an officer. In addition, Chief George was inspirational. Inspiration is defined as a divine influence of action on a person believed to qualify him or her to receive and communicate a sacred revelation. The action or power of moving the intellect or emotions, the act of influencing or suggesting opinions. That's certainly Chief George. Another characteristic of Chief George is his ability to see things through. He reminds me of a poem, and I'd like to recite it. Some of you all may know this poem. If you know it, please let me say it with me. It's called See It Through. See It Through. When you're up against the trouble, meet you squarely face to face. Lift your chin, set your shoulders, plant your feet, and take a break. When it's vain to try to dodge it, do the best that you can do. You may fail, but you may conquer and see it through. Black may be the clouds about you, and your future may seem grim. Don't let your nerve desert you, keep yourself in fighting trim. If the worst is found to happen, in spite of all that you can do, running from it will not save you. See it through. See it through. I'd like everybody to stand and help me congratulate Fire Chief Sherman George as he was inducted into the Curio Black History Memorial Service. Sherman George is the black. from uh, Senator Robert Wright Jones. Uh, I don't think her, she's in the house. But, uh, yeah. Mr. Senator. Congratulations upon being featured in an interpretive exhibit 
at the Black History Museum. And we are doing this heartfelt, and congratulations, my dear friend. Chief George sat on the high board of trustees at the ACLU, so our organization couldn't get directly involved because of conflict of interest issues, but I was proximate to the daily, and I mean daily fight, the daily pressure, and I mean pressure that was put on this man when he knew he was right, when we knew he was right. And it was hard initially, in the beginning, to get people to rally to the cause because they were either intimidated or saw their feet before they got these guys and started a lot. But I would sit with Chief Jones, I would sit with Chief Charles Coyne, and watch the fortitude of these men every day, dig in. And what's never about him? And he may not say this, but I can say it because I got the money. <laughs> He made clear to everyone it was never about him individually. All those brothers that you just saw stand up earlier who were firefighters, your opportunity to be on the department was hard fought and hard won. And he was holding on to that for future generations. <laughs> That's what it was about. That's what it was about for him every day. Somebody knew would come to him, Chief, why don't you just, they offer you this, they want to give you this, Chief, if you would just, and he would say, man, it's not about me. It's about the opportunities going forward for those who come behind me. I can't commend you enough. Uh, we love you, and I, I, I know you feel it, because I, I know you know I was there. But, but brother, let me tell you, God is good, and today is here for you, and we are here to honor you. And you burned it, we love it, and thank you for your service and your example to those of us who can come behind you and attempt to provide the kind of leadership that you've shown us in an example. We love you for that, bro. with all of you on behalf of the International Association of Black Professional Firefighters, thousands of men and women throughout the continental U.S., the country of Canada, the Caribbean region, Africa, and the United Kingdom, and saluting our brother, Chief Sherman George. Time doesn't permit, but you know this brother, as has already been said, one who took great pleasure in conducting deliberate dialogue with dignity with us. He took great pleasure in constructive community criticism and conversations with us. We've known this man to be dignified. We've known this man to be a host with the most. Those of us who have come from out of town to St. Louis, he has always been a host with the most. He's a Herculean hero of humility to those of us who are in the fire service because of him providing service. And of course, we respect and admire this man, but I must also uh, tell you how much I admire and respect the man based on his admiration and respect for those men and women who came before him. 
Those of you who know him know that he will never have a conversation with you without exemplifying his attitude of gratitude of those who came before him. His brilliance by God's permission to us in the fire service is also that, as the previous speaker just said, he always laid the base for those who would be coming after him to let us know it's not about us as individuals, but it's about us as a collective. So as many lyrics I could use in the church, they say way back in the Bible days, no one told the people that it's going to rain. But what he told them, they paid him no mind. And when he left, he got left behind. It's going to rain, it's going to rain. You better get ready and bear this in mind. God showed Noah the rainbow sign. It won't be water, but what? Come on, Christians, it won't be water, but what? I can't hear you. What will it be? Now, the police will tell you, you know it's against the law to yell fire in the public place. That was the setup. But all the black chief officers around America, all the women who are in the fire service, this man has actually given his life. So it gives us great honor to salute him and give him his flowers while he can smell them. You may or may not know that he represents one of, in terms of our research and development, maybe four other busts or statues that have been dedicated to firefighters. Chief Wesley Williams, who started the Vulcan Society in 1940. Uh, uh, our second president, Charlie Hendricks, in Philadelphia, and they just unveiled the bus in Austin, Texas. So again, this, as my previous speaker said, is to remind us in generations unborn, just like the pyramids, just like the Olmec statues in Mexico, that when they see this man and they read the record that the aldermen talked about, we know this man as a beautiful human being, a beautiful human being, and so much can be said, but I started out by saying time does not permit, so I thank you for this opportunity. Chief, we salute you.
he will cook. And Catherine had a meeting. She went to two high schools. And I think she'd meet with both of them for their reunion. <laughs> and Sherman is cooking for both of them. <laughs> All right. Remember not like having a group like this so they can get you the truth. <laughs> All right. She has a couple more. And I want you to know that I have lifted up that curtain going twice today. I thought I could get a sneak preview. That statue is so well covered, there's no way. <laughs> so we're going to all be splendidly surprised. But before we leave, Richard Gray, I do want you to say something on behalf of being the host also today. And you may have an announcement for the Gateway class. And our last two in this segment are Dr. Carl Holmes, the founder of the Carl Holmes Executive Development Institute. And Dr. Holmes is from, I have it here, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. All right. And while he's coming, I want to also acknowledge Dave Washington, former fire chief from Las Vegas, one of the instructors at the Institute. Where are you? Dave Washington, all right. And I also want to acknowledge Chief Campbell, former assistant chief of Las Vegas, Nevada, and former assistant chief in Dallas, Texas, instructor at EDA. As the folks uh, in my hometown state, we are in her cotton today. <laughs> oh, of course. And following uh, Dr. Holmes, I believe that brings us, oh yeah, following Dr. Holmes, we have a group of fire chiefs, uh, battalion chiefs retired. They're going to come up in a group and they will be represented. So the retired fire chiefs who will be up here are Roy George, Robert Grady, Matt Miley, Stanley Johnson, and William Jones. You will follow Dr. Holmes. And Joseph Jones also. And let me say that Marty Abusi, was scheduled to be here, but could not come. Sometimes he has difficulties with mobility now, but he did call Chief George today to express his uh, salutation to him. So we wanted to call Marty and Lucy's name. All right, thank you. Where's Doctor? There he is. He's, <laughs> he's kind of cool, isn't he? <laughs> Good evening to you. Hey I'm not going to tie you up tonight talking about a lot of things okay. Okay. like Sherman. Sherman and I go a long, long, long way back. Years and years. The whole fight. Uh, But we, we, we've been to a, it's been at a distance, but we could be of help to each other. It's like that they talked about Sherman, it's a little simple thing. He has a strong, strong dedication of being straight down the line. Oh. He's been straight on the line, no matter what he is, no matter how wrong he is. But if he does something wrong, he helps him. Sherman can't get to him. And he had to take some real tough things, tough delicious about his own authority. So he had to make some strong decisions on where he was going to be. To get where he is, where he got him, he did that on his own. He did that on his own, with his dedication, and the fact that he knew that what he was right. Mm -hmm. And he had the idea of really bringing this department to where it is today. He had the chance to do that by buying all the opposition, all the cutbacks, all the fights, the infighting, racism, also. That he was able to stick, stick it. I'm sure I don't know how you do it. A couple of 
tied to the concerts together. And whenever we would see people that were kind of off, <laughs> and them saying something crazy in the meeting, he said, what do you want me to do, Lil' B? But please chief, he would take his finger and shoot him. <laughs> so together, I would recommend who needs to be not killed, but just stop. <laughs> so Tom would take his finger. And he said, I'll get him for you. Do you remember that time? I hate to admit it. But that's what we used to do in the good old days. He was a, a conference center when I was at Northwest. And so thank you for all that you've done in education and in the legislature. And we certainly would not like to leave without saying something to the group Chairman George. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Uh, I knew I had a good one, Woolfolk, before she had money. <laughs> and I knew my nephew, Matt, and uh, Sherman George before they were both driving black Mercedes Benz. <laughs> and I just told Leroy Wilson that uh, if Donald Suck is used as an excuse being at 4 o'clock mass, he's fibbing. He was not there. I was. Uh, uh, Sherman is special in our community of Prodlet. Uh, he is a genuinely, genuinely giving person. Uh, he's extremely unselfish with his time. Uh, he has gone through uh, three automatic villas, and uh, I'm very, very proud of him and his wife and his daughters as he is proud of them. And uh, Sherman, uh, I wouldn't have missed this. Uh, you happen to pick a day when. Uh, my wife, Karen, and I married an older woman, uh, she, she turned 66 today. So uh, with that, uh, thank you for, uh, I, I am going so I don't get in any more trouble, but uh, Sherman, I, I wouldn't have missed this, and, and again, he, he's just one of those special people, and that this recognition is, is truly, truly deserved. Thank you. I was there. 
I was trying to run it. Well, anyway, it, it was about him. And he knows that I'm proud of him. But I always will be.
took care of his brother. That's the reason I know when she say he cooks, uh-uh. I fed Roy. I don't fed the whole family. He don't stole my chitlin cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> but I like to say, I like to thank him for everything he's done. He might be cheap, but he's a stand-up guy. <laughs> And I know how to get even with it, because when you do me wrong, mom, I'll call you in a minute. But I'd like to thank you, Chief. And if don't nobody else, and if you need looking out for I'll put your wheel. <laughs> Mickey Mouse is damn a mile away. And not only can he spell it, he can stand up to it. 
Let's see if she's going to do this. Maybe someone can come on this side. So maybe only can come on that side and the other one on this side. I can kind of split up a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, like it. Yeah, like it. Right there. If you will come on one side, you'll stand on this side. And then Bill, if you'll come over here, so you can help us. Bill, give Paul so you can kind of drop that for when we get ready. Okay, here we go. Quickly, I'm going to read some some little thoughts here. I just want to first of all thank all of you for coming out today and for anything and everything that you might have done to help make um, this really, really successful occasion. Um, we couldn't have asked for anything better, so we really want to applaud you for your support. Of the whole event. And it's not over yet. We will have an interpretive exhibit at the Creole Museum of Black History, and we're really inviting you to come over and see it. It will be available for you to view after May 15th in its entirety. So please come. If you were here today, you are entitled to a complimentary visit to see the uh, exhibit, and we hope that you will come and that you'll bring somebody else with you. Um, I think I, I did want to make sure that I thank the unveiling uh, sponsor, our master of ceremony, Ida Wolfolk, who has been our um, <laughs> who has been our board chair now at the Rio for the last four years. And we just want to thank her for her years of service to the Rio and for her continuing service uh, in the years to come. And all of the volunteers and especially the family of Sherman George, who have allowed him to share his time and his talent and his service to our community. You know, our name says that we, our, our job is to collect, uh, document, and preserve the history of Missouri's rich African American heritage. And so when we get an opportunity to do that through people like Sherman George and those folks who have selfishly given up themselves. Um, it's a special blessing for us. It helps to affirm, reaffirm us why we do what we do in our community. And we know that if we don't do it, nobody else will do it. So we are especially happy to be adding the story of Sherman George and his rise through the fire department to our family of other important reels. And we hope that you will come and support not only what we do here, but support those folks who we honor in the museum. Um, I've got everybody up here who I think should be able to missing anybody who has participated in any way uh, that was significant for us in developing this exhibit. Eric, are you up here? Eric, and who's our other? We have two staff people at the Creo Museum. One and Erica the other. So Erica, please stand. I could not uh, operate the museum without her. So at this time, I know you're ready for this to all be over. This is the moment you waited for. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you uh, Fire Chief Sherman Joy.
Yo! Yeah. 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 I was going to have 
educated myself. I worked hard. And I had the support, the support of the black firefighters and the support of every black fire chief in the city of Yeah. They supported me unconditionally. And again, I appreciate it. You know, there's some people that suffer. Chief Stanley Johnson, he, he suffered too. He, did not, he stood up. Most people don't recognize him. He stood up and just as much as I And I want to thank you, Stanley. But I'm going to tell you something. Something when I was cute, something that happened that was totally against my principle. You know, I was not, I was not going to be racist against my own people. That's just what's going to happen. I want you to know the decisions I made, every decision I made, I made it in the best interest of all citizens of the city of Jamaica. My decision not to promote was one of those decisions. Now, it would definitely would have been easy to say, okay, I'll do whatever you want me to do. But let me tell you, make no mistake about this. It was not about testing. Right. It was about race. Something that we don't talk about, and that's why it's getting worse. We don't want to talk about what our new issues are. We're willing to talk about how bad our children are. We're willing to do that. But I want to talk about how good they are. And what they need is what I need, what I have. It's an opportunity. An opportunity to do good for the community. An opportunity to build our family. We're talking about opportunity. And that was given to me by the people in this room and the friends and the family that I love so very much. So I'm asking each one of you all, the next time that somebody says something about, well, the problem is, our children need to be educated. And that's true. But don't we all need to be educated? That's right. You know, when I see those people stand out there on the highway with those signs that say stop and slow and go, you know, I very seldom see one of us. And does it require a college degree? We need to put up just like everybody else. And I'm going to ask you to stand tall for our people, for our young people, because when people have a decent jobs like I have, or like most of us have, they tend to act like us. They don't get into trouble. They don't commit crime. They want to do the best thing for their family. And they don't get into trouble. They don't go to jail. So I'm asking you all, every one of you, to stand up for these young people, because it's, not, it's an old cliche. But they are our future. They are our future. When people are out of work, they tend to do desperate things. When they don't have a decent job, they do things that they would not do. So I don't want you to think that you or you or anyone else is going to be better than anybody else. I ask that you support our young people, just like these firefighters supported me. And if that happens, they will be successful. And I just thank each one of you for being here. And I want to and Brenda Jones, you know, there are, I would say, all the money, 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 all my wife, my daughter, and when Brenda and Lola decided to do this for me, that was just a natural. You know, I used to say in the fire department, this is true, if it wasn't something physical, I said, you know, if I want something done, I just ask for these things. <laughs> and it got done. It was so no hard, it was no fun, so let's get it done. So I want to thank all of you for being here, but yes, these are my babies, and I call my baby. Older, one, I don't know where they went, two, and uh, my son is on the air, and Kelly's on the air, and I, I got one more last thing to say. And I give me, give me that opportunity to say one thing. I was in Virginia last Saturday, this time, and I was watching my granddaughter. Wait, 
She's a freshman at the University of Massachusetts. Um, they were playing for the Atlantic 10 Conference Championship. And it went down to the water. They lost when they were second place. And that's great. But I will say one thing, my grandmother has won more than anybody in the history of the school. 28 matches. 28. Uh, I don't know if you can be able to but you do it And I don't know. I want to thank you all again. And I just, this is unbelievable. It's overwhelming. I just love her. Thank you very much. Thank you for his fortitude and all of the good 
traits that you put within him and that he used them for the benefit of not himself but of others. Lord, we do thank you for all who made this event possible, all the hard work that went into it, and all those who gathered together to partake in it and share it. And so, Lord, we, we offer you thanks. And Lord, we ask that you would go with us as we leave this place, keep us safe on the roads, and Lord, we also ask that young people would be inspired as they visit the museum to follow in the path, the footsteps of the trailblazer, and be trailblazers themselves. And we will give you all the honor and the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Got a tornado watching the area. Like, that's people know we got a tornado watching the area. Some of the people are not going to be safe outside. Okay? Now, how long are you going to be here? Yeah, there you go. Can you stand by the statue for me? Can you stand by the statue? Oh, yeah. With the director? Uh, 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 there are tornadoes in the area, one that left down in the highway, and uh, there has been a terrible accident on, on the Hot Street Bridge. Uh, seven people apparently are dead, and we want to be very careful as we make our way back to our, to our home to another destination. Tornadoes in the area.